Uh, this is Dr. G. I have a couple things for you today, and you can see here on your screen, I have a large crumpled piece of paper. That's right. We are moving on to our new challenge, the contour lines. That's a great chance to repractice some skills that you already have. And it's a great way to just slow down for a minute and really pay attention to some of the things that are around you in your own home. Uh, or in this case, um, you also have the option of pulling a couple things from images. But I'm going to do the challenge for us today. And what that entails is crumpling up the piece of paper. Now, I'm going to go ahead and set it on the side. And just so you're aware, I'm going to try to tilt the camera. Let's see if we can do it over here. That's pretty confusing. But if you take my word for it, there's a couple things there. A mouse, a roll of paper crumpled piece of paper and the pencil, but that doesn't count because I'm going to use it. And so what we want to do here is extend the work that we did the last two days, which was really just to remember how to do shape drawing, how to make things as proportional as possible and take it to a more final level. So there are a couple of things that we were going to do first, like we did before. I'm going to make sure this is focused for us. Um, let's see if we can see that. A little bit better. There we go. Um, first thing we want to do is get our basic shapes. Now, the basic shapes, if you'll recall from class, we just want to map out where things belong and what those things are going to look like. And when we do this work, we're not too picky about every detail. We're thinking of things more in general shapes. Now, when I say that, I also want you to be aware that I have no hang up and you should neither um, on just only using squares, circles and rectangles. So a couple of you sent some fantastic drawings, but you just did big uh, basic shapes and you don't have to do that. Um, instead, what you could do here, and I'm quite certain you could do it well, is find some irregular shapes. So some of these irregular shapes are going to help us know where the parts and pieces go. And then from that, we can build out everything else. Now, we don't have to have it be a perfect um, fit of every small shape. We're just trying to find really the most major parts. And so there's a big part here, there's another one there, and I'm going to leave it. Now, let me slide it up a little bit more for you, and I'm going to say this. A lot of you are also just putting a central object. And so for the next challenge, um, which I'd like you to you know, think about extending a little bit of time with, I want you to be certain that you're including things around it as well. And, uh, for example, in my little mess that I displayed here, I have a cord. So I can go ahead and start my chord. I can go ahead and put that in. Now I haven't really added a ton of detail. I haven't added really all of the contours, but I'm in the process, right? Of just making sure that things are in a place that makes sense. So I'm gonna swing one of these chords over here. And before I know it, um, guess what I got? A little bit of tape, I got a tape roll. It's kind of running off of the screen a little bit, um, but I'm going to try to get some more of it in Have a little bit here. That's going to look like that eventually. And I'm on my way. All right. Um, this cord is coming up pretty big and it's swinging back around on this side. I'm not too worried about it being all the way lined up. And then somewhere through the back of this cord, just to about here is my uh, tube of paper, not mine but a tube of paper. And yeah, everybody's working from home, right? So we've got that in the space. I'm gonna add a little bit of details for it, straighten that out a bit. And then even behind it, I have part of my lamp. So this whole thing um, is starting to get on its way. I notice there's a couple more parts of my cords that are gonna go back this way. And I'm really working to fill the space which is something that I'd like to see you do. But for the contour lines, um, and this is the second point that I want to make. So the first point was 
your shapes don't have to be regular. But the second point, based on what you've shared, is that when you add a plane or a line, you can show smaller folds. So like inside of this piece right here that I'm looking at, some of this bumps out on the outside, but also the inside has like a crinkle here that I'm gonna include. I think you might've heard my dog. She's really old and barks at everything. Um, planes, nothing, anything you could think of. And as I'm going through now, I'm also noticing where these other folds are. And I want to make sure that I put them in the right spot because, which you know, when we come back and we start adding value later, I'm going to be in much better shape to put in where the light hits it or it doesn't, right? So if the light is hitting here and this is going to be in shadow and there's a big wrinkle here, I'm going to see that and it's going to be really noticeable. Like this one, I've got a big fold here and a little bit of a curve. Now, this is the challenge of the three. And for the next assignment, we're gonna stretch for the next two days. I want you to pick either one or two. And then on the third day, I want you to try the challenge. So today, the challenge was absolutely optional. Um, and I see a couple of you absolutely went for it and that's great now when you do the challenge um, in two days i don't want you to think that you have to make the most crumbly paper or that it has to be really complicated i mean it could be just a regular old paper bag that has a couple folds in it what we're really working on here is trying to figure out where are those folds and where are those major lines um, because what happens is that a piece of paper is a plane and that plane of paper bends and folds. And so we're trying to capture each fold or each bend in the plane. So a little bit of uh, geometric thinking skills, some really great observation skills. And, you know, with a little bit of luck, by the end, you'll have this whole thing set up and we'll start to get a sense um, of where those wrinkles are. Now, I saw a couple of you uh, did a really bang up job and went in and added value. You certainly don't have to, um, but if you are getting to that point where you think it might be a nice thing to add in, um, I don't think you should stop yourself, right? You've got some time. It's a great way to kind of focus your mind and bring your attention to the thing that's right in front of you and uh, you know the end result is you get more practice so responding now a little bit to one of the emails I got from one of you and was just saying you know um, feeling frustrated with the drawings but I want to make a reminder to you, and this is a really important one, is that just like, you know, sometimes in class we'll do a free draw where you get to be more imaginative, or sometimes in class we'll draw from an object, remember our box of toys, um, you are just going to get more practice, and the more practice you get, the better you're going to get. So here I've got a couple of those um, bigger folds happening. We're setting up where those angles are. And again, if you're at that point and you think, oh, you know what, it would be good to add a value in, you can start thinking about how it's going to hit inside of that space. You know, when we work the value scale, sometimes we work it from really dark to really light. But I want you to keep in mind that a lot of times in this situation, there's going to be just a quick jump, right? From there's a shadow part and then there's a light part. So something like that. But for the time being, what I'm going to be interested in um, is just the fact that you're starting with your shapes and then coming back and adding another level of attention, right? Um, you know, I, you've heard me say, I think sometimes we would say, or if a teacher says, well, add more detail or add more, um, uh, you know, add more sentences or something like this. It's not really what we want. 
what we really want is for you to extend your focus and extend your attention and really in a lot of ways extend your care so um, i'm going to go ahead and pull back from this one you see we're starting to get the wrinkles um, this line is going to end up being really dark in here because there's shadow underneath it um, but the rest of these are starting to go where they need to the underside's got a lot of wrinkles in it and if i was going to tackle it um, I'd have to be really careful, but notice, even when I do the outside shapes, they're going to change a little bit because my original shapes have to be very basic and it's just a, just a setup, right? It's just to help me know where I have to put things and just to make sure that they're in the right place. So if I started with these lines, I could let myself wander to the wrong spot in the wrong shape. I might not have the right kinds of negative space that I need in my in my drawing. So as you're doing your work, start really light, get your shapes on there. And then from that, I want you to just jump right towards um, getting to those more final lines with the contour lines. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and post this video on YouTube, I'm going to post the assignment. And it will run exactly like this um, for the first day, which if I can remember is Thursday. There it is. I know my days. Um, I'd like you to go ahead and do challenge one or challenge two of your contour line drawings. And then for the last day for Friday, I want you to do challenge three in some way. Now it doesn't have to be the hardest crumpled paper or the, messiest pile of desk supplies, uh, which is more what I've got here, but it can be anything that's going to be well suited for you and going to help you have a bit of a challenge, but not be bored either, right? So if you find that you're frustrated, then that's usually a sign that maybe you've overwhelmed yourself. But if you also find that you're blowing through very quickly and feeling a little bored, um, you have to rethink what kind of object, what kind of challenge you're giving yourself because it's got to fit. And when it fits, you're going to be interested in it. You're going to be motivated. It's still going to be a little hard, but at the same time, it's going to be something that's going to engage you. So thinking about how you're feeling about your work uh, matters a lot. And it's a great way to know whether or not you've given yourself the kind of problem you need to really help yourself do a good job, all right? So that's it for today.